I'm Rob Lucuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Emmy nominee Steve Zahn, star of the sensational White Lotus. First of all, mate, congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Thank you. That's very exciting. I'm thrilled. Um, where were you or how did you find out of the morning of the uh, announcement? Yeah, I was I was really, to be honest, I, I, I was unaware of everything. I was working down in, in Charleston and I, I had just gone to a... <laughs> I had just come back from a rehearsal. It was a, a snake meet and greet. Long story. It'd take 20 okay. minutes. And um, and I was uh, I had groceries and I was coming up to my my little apartment there and my phone went nuts and I thought maybe I I, I was supposed to go back to work or something. <laughs> but it was it was Dominique calling me saying congratulations. So and and then it was a and then it was a really fun day. It was a fun day of just like my my phone. It was like it, it was my birthday. You know, yeah. you know, when your phone blows up on your birthday and you become your secretary and you take care of, you know, texting everyone back. And, and so, that yeah, I, I, that's a really I've never really heard of it that way, but that actually makes a lot of sense because it's so fun on your birthday to hear from everybody that, you know, to, to you know, to wish you well. And so you get nominated for an Emmy. Um, like I was so thrilled to see you in that category and it, it's so cool that it's you know you're nominated alongside jake and murray yeah um, and, and five of the women are nominated too like what were your reactions to how the show was so overwhelmingly embraced by the academy I, I couldn't believe it i mean i was so floored i got we immediately i mean we have a we have a, a thread that we've been on since the day we wrapped um we we're all really tight and um i couldn't believe it i i thought what a coup, man. I mean, and, and it just, uh, you know, it's a great show. And Mike yeah. White did just a phenomenal job on it. You know, we, we, we did what we had to do. And then, and then he really put this thing together in just a beautiful way. It's just, I mean, man, I mean, honest with you, I, I, we were eight months into a, a, you know, I hadn't worked. You know, I got kids in college, you know, I would have done a Pringles commercial. I mean, I'd still do one, but, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, uh, but um, I would have done anything. I really would have. And then to to be able to do something like this was just amazing. Yeah, yeah I, I can imagine like you guys were filming in the height of COVID. You've called over to Maui. You're in these bubbles. You know, it's it, I heard it was a really fun shoot but it was still pretty hard and there were a lot of early mornings jennifer coolidge said you know she got up at three o'clock and she looked like she'd been hit with a shovel and so you know <laughs> i love that line um so like but you know it's it's just nice to get the recognition because the show really it really kind of um hit and a lot of people still talking about it a year later uh what 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 was your best you know, memory from thinking back i know it feels like 100 years ago but thinking back to being in maui and filming and shooting with these people and with Mike White's beautiful words, what was your kind of highlight from that show, shoot? Well, it was really, I mean, the whole thing, um, I hope my internet is okay. I have yeah. to touch internet, it's like, whatever. Anyway, the whole show was very unique. It's one of my favorite jobs I've ever done. And, and for so many different reasons, but it was kind of like film camp. Everybody had to be there. Everybody was invested in the same way right? We all lived there. The extras lived there. The crew lived there. We all, we all were in this, this like tight group and wow. it just felt different. The work felt different. The focus you put on it felt different. You weren't driving home. We weren't going to dinners. We weren't, we were like a family. We would get together every night and have dinner, you know? Wow. And, 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 and that was, that was really unique. I mean, it truly was like a camp. And I, I want to say that the product had a lot to was a result of that vibe man you know it wasn't yeah. a mistake and and i i really think we focused in a different way and it and you know mike writes the script it's, it's like doing a freaking play i mean he's like a he's like the tennessee williams of 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 you know the the screen um, yeah you know where you get to really sit and dive into stuff not to get all actory and artsy but Man, how fun, man. How fun to do a dinner scene that doesn't suck. I mean, dinner yeah. scenes suck. They, just, just because it takes forever, man, you got to shoot 
over the shoulder and this and that. If I look at him, like, I'm not going to look at you because I don't want them to cover this. We're going to be here all night. Those scenes were a blast because of the writing yeah. and because of the people around the table, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it's so great to hear because it really does kind of fly off the screen and that's why it's become so popular. So you play Mark, obviously, who at first blush, to me, like, I thought, you know, it's a relatively harmless guy, a bit emasculated by his powerful executive wife, two disengaged kids. Um, and, you know, then we start to learn more about him. He's got this uh, false alarm brush with testicular cancer. Then he learned his father died of AIDS. So, like, okay, we start to learn more about him. And, he, you know, he has this really fascinating existential crisis. So when you're reading the scripts, preparing to play him, um, what was going through your mind about how you wanted to approach playing Mark? Well, I, I think there's a lot of different ways you could play him. And I wanted to play him really just a, a, a totally vulnerable, accessible human being that wore everything on his sleeves, you know, and that was is that I thought was the 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 great quality in Mark, but it was also the his his Achilles heel, man. You know, it was the thing that that got him in trouble. His being honest in the moment without thinking about what he was saying um and i think you know i'm like that in a lot of ways and and then being confronted with the things that he was being confronted with made me howl i mean to play that real was hysterical to go from one extreme to the other and then ping pong back and forth was i thought it was brilliant and it was such a great part and I constantly was finding stuff. And, you know, Fred and I rehearsed it like it was a play. We yeah. in my room, his was a mess. But, and we, you know, here's this kid who's like 21 years old and just a brilliant guy and a brilliant actor. And we would rehearse these scenes. I mean, Mike could have told us when we did the pool scene, he could have said, I, I changed my mind. We're going to do it on jet skis. <laughs> I'm like, great, fine. We got it. No problem. We're going to do it on horseback. Let's go. Let's yeah. Go it. We know what we're doing, you know. That's awesome. That's so cool because, like, when I say this, I, I don't mean I didn't like the other characters because I did. I had something for every character that I really enjoyed. Yeah. But with Mark, I found him so relatable and he was probably the most likable uh, of the of the characters because he's just, like, kind and and, you know, a bit weird. But there was nothing really that mean about him. So that's what, that was my way in. And then to have these scenes between you and Fred, um, obviously, you know, Mark and his son um, were beautiful because I felt like I kind of understood, I think all of us who've been, you know, in our forties and fifties kind of had some kind of existential crisis breakdown, come to Jesus moment. Right. And so I was wondering how that reflected on you personally when you're, when you're saying those words that Mike's written about Mark and what he wants to do with his life and connect with his son. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I'm doing that in real life. I mean, I'm, you know, you're constantly connecting and reconnecting because, because as an, as an adult, you change. And as a, and as a, you know, my son is, is 22. He was 21. They're the same age, you know, and the truth one week is a joke. The next week it's, it's not true. <laughs> You know, and it's like because because you think it over again or you you know what I said, forget about that. You know what? Just go smell the world, dude. Don't don't worry about having a major. You know, I don't know what I was talking about. There's so many things that I had, I really adhered to with this script. I don't know if this answers your question, but it does. Yeah, but it, it, it was really it was really personal, but it was <laughs> and it was also very foreign to me. I mean. I'm not this guy. I wouldn't go to this place. I'm, I'm, I don't live in a family like this. You know, it's completely opposite. Yet we have the same conversations around the table when my kids are home about yeah. things that you're not supposed to talk about. We talked about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. which was really fun to, to address things that were just taboo, man. Yeah, are really fun. And how many times have I said that my kids are 12 and, uh, 12 and 13, how many times have I said, can you get your eyes off the iPad for five seconds? Like, you know, things like that, that I think a lot of parents really related to Mark. And also, um, you know, he, does, he, he, he eventually realizes given when he finds out he doesn't have testicular cancer and he finds out about his dad, let's not take life for granted. Let's actually kind of go scuba diving. Let's actually live a little. And that I found really 
really quite liberating just watching him take that journey. And so that's what I was also wondering whether you finish the shoot, you're exhausted, you've had a really good time, but do you, have you taken any of that stuff from Mark with you or was that already like you anyway? No, that was already kind of like me anyway. I mean, I'm the guy, I'm the dad that would encourage him, guy, go, go paddle with those guys. Just be safe and cut. make sure I know where the, the F you are, man. You know, that, that, that's, that's what I would yeah. say. That's, yeah. that's who I am. But, um, you know, it's interesting. Cause if you, if you, if you went to another show, if you, if you revisited this, right. It would be Fred, you know, thanking me because I was the one that spurred it. Let's go scuba diving. Let's do something different. Let's, you know what I mean? Turn off your phone. He's the one who actually spurred it, right? It's, he found it on his own. He found those guys on his own sleeping on the beach. And, you know, I, I just love that character because he, he, you know, my son is the only winner. He wins. Yeah, it's so true. Um, but I also found a lot of this, the stuff that you were doing very funny. Um, like, for example, when Mark finds out, you know, he's, well, he's grappling with his mortality, right? And I found that very oddly amusing because his wife and two kids are like, you can just tell they're like, mm-hmm, cool. All right. Anyway, back to what I was doing. And I find that I was like, I'll come downstairs and be like, I have a really, really bad cold. I feel like shit. And my kids will be like, okay, dad, you'll be all right. Okay. It wasn't that they, they care, but they're like, relax. And I just, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 found, I found that very, very, very funny. Uh, what did you think about that dynamic between the, the family? Yeah, I, I, I did. I found a lot of humor in this. I mean, I laughed my ass off when I read the script. So I had to, I, and that was the, that was the interesting thing when we started shooting, because I, you know, I think I pretty much understood the tone, but we were all kind of like, you know, it's not like we did some big group scene where we, we were all together. So you're mm -hmm. like, how how far am I pushing this? How far do you want me to go? What where into funny are we going? And then right immediately, Mike was like, "Just do it like really boring, you know." Like I just want it to be. Mike would say things like, "And and this sounds like a horrible direction." It's not. He's like, "I just want it to be real." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, that's a good note." Oh God, I got you. And Love then I, I interpreted that, and and he was like, "Yeah, that's what I'm talking about." But um, but yeah, the, the 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 funny came out of playing it. That's like most comedies; you play it completely serious, and it's hysterical. Yeah, and thankfully you've had a little bit of experience on the comedy side, so I think you kind of know what you're doing. Um, but I, uh, you know, with all the funny, especially him at the bar, he's 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 found out about his dad. Then you've got the great scenes with Armand and um, you know, Murray Bartlett, obviously taking it to the nth degree and. I love the way you two actually had that interplay. There's not a lot of scenes between you and Murray, but those scenes in particular, and then also at the dinner were the real highlights. Is there, what's what's the best thing about Murray working alongside him? What do you most value? Uh, he, well, number one, he's like one of, one of the, uh, he's an amazing human being. He's a great guy. And as an actor, we had so much fun with the limited stuff that we were doing. We couldn't wait to do that scene at the bar when I was drunk and he was drunk. <laughs> he couldn't wait. Um, he was one of the reasons why it was so great, that whole experience. And he had a monumental task, a monumental lift playing that part and making it what it is. That his performance is incredible i think yeah I yeah actually, it's hard to i mean the shit he had to do man <laughs> i mean I, I mean aside from the obvious you know you got to be yeah. naked and stuff but like the places you have to go the trajectory of this guy was insane yeah you know? yeah i feel uh, that way about so many of you um I mean, yeah. you have to film it all out of what out of order. And so there's one moment where you're like cool and calm. And then the next moment you've just found out, you know, your dad's got a, had AIDS. And I just, I just don't know how I'm, I'm sure you're used to this and this is how you film normal things. And, but I just, just wonder, was that difficult to navigate or did Mike have it pretty much down pat? No, it was somewhat, we had a lot of time to just work on it. So, so it was out of order because we had such a sh short period of time to shoot this thing yeah you know what I mean? 
and and I mean, again, the script was so good. I mean, the script, the blueprint was so clear. We all knew what we were doing. Everyone knew where everyone was going. You know, yeah. so we didn't have to do this like powwow. Where 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 do we? Let's figure some stuff out because it's not clear. It was crystal clear. What I do, <laughs> I'm like an old guy with a trapper keeper, right? With the with with the here. <laughs> On this guy. This is the thing I'm doing right now. Here's how I work. I have all these little tabs in here, right? Those wow. are different days. Those are different. Everything is everything is everything is like an old, like I'm in junior high, okay? That's how I do it. That's how I learn it, and that's how I work. And then I rip something off when I'm done with it, and I put it in the back. And I only focus on the things that, and then I have all these notes saying, okay, that's how my brain works. That's how wow. I some people are, are really gifted and they don't have to do that. But I don't know. I, and, and, and then part of me goes, your responsibility is to play the truth of that moment. It's not my job to connect everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so I, I learned that from the great Bill Macy. He said that on set, we were working once and he was telling the director that. And I said, man, that's it, man. He's like, yeah, I just concentrate on this you know you don't have to tell me remember there's germans everywhere <laughs> it's like i know that's you know remember yeah. the last scene and you know so you that's just play cool. through the moment and if the script is good it'll work regardless just like we do in reality you know we're, we're in the moment that's fascinating right. Wait, you can be like weeping or you could be really moved by something. And then the garage door opens and someone's standing there and you're totally different. You know, yeah. hey, how can I help you? I'm sorry. Are you crying? No, no, I'm, I'm fine. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's and, fascinating. That's that, I've never really heard that before, but that makes so much sense. You know, what's really funny with you, um, Steve, is like I've heard how fans of certain performers, they connect certain projects. So like, when I had mentioned to my daughter, oh, you know, this is what I'm doing tomorrow, and I'm Steve's on. It's like, oh, I love that guy. Like, I, I kind of grew up with him from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. You know, she's only 13, so that's kind of right. tracks. <laughs> I'm like, really? That's that's what you're thinking of? And I'm thinking Happy Texas. Um, are you surprised, or what? Have you noticed that that's funny now that White Lotus is so big that maybe a lot more people are attaching you to that than all the stuff you've done in the past? Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I, I still have a lot of people that come up for for different genres and different time periods. It's just yeah. what, where I am in your head. It's really, <laughs> it's really fascinating to me. I mean, I I get. I'm, that's why I love doing those. I mean, I did um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I did because my son was nine. Yeah, that's what we read. That was the that was the first and only thing. Well, not the only thing, but the first thing that. He kind of acknowledged that as something that wasn't um, wasn't like uh, my job. Yeah, what? they're making this into a movie. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be like the coolest dude at pickup man at school. Yeah, ever. <laughs> and you probably and, were. You know, so anyway, it's great to do those things because you 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 reintroduce to 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 you know generations and and there's a few generations that will watch that there was a few generations that watch daddy daycare you know yeah. and then they and then they go to college and they watch something else and they're like oh there's that guy that's yeah. the guy ah what's he from you know that's right and it's and great now. and you and and i'm a character actor so you know i keep re i keep finding stuff and they keep finding stuff that i'm in where i'm different that's so cool that's a dream, I think. That's like a real it privilege. It is, man. It's the goal. It's the goal. Yeah, you know, absolutely. The best job and I ever did was was Planet of the Apes because no one knew it was me. Yeah, that's it's the right. Ultimate actor's dream. What a dream! And you get paid, and you get paid for your, you know, doing your awesome voice work. That's so cool. I love that. Um, well, look, I'm looking forward to the Pringles ads. I think you should take them if you get offered that now that you've said it out loud. And no, but seriously, mate, I thought you were so phenomenal in this show. It, maybe you didn't do a whole coke addled, um, you know, routine like Murray did, but I think some of the stuff that you were able to do in this was so beautiful. And I'm really, really happy you were nominated at the Emmys and, and good you. luck that night. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Thank you.